Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for. <coughs> oh, finally, I've been trying to uh, get Nick to stop possessing my body now for God, I don't know how long. Um, I'll probably only be depossessed for enough time to make this review, so I'll try to be quick. Uh, hey everybody, uh, Aman here, and today I've got a review for you of this little guy right here. Uh, this is the Northside Knife Komodo. Um, now before I continue, um, I realize that um, I'm not uh, a very prominent reviewer. Uh, Nick is definitely <laughs> quite a bit more, uh, I guess, productive than I am. Um, who am I? Well, I'm basically just a guy who likes knives. Um, I've been buying and selling knives now for uh, over two years. I am uh, heavily, I guess, involved, at least I was, over on the Knife Swap subreddit. Uh, and then I like to peruse Knife Club as well, so I've been buying and selling knives for a long time, uh, at least relatively speaking. Um, I'm basically just kind of a knife nut. Uh, next, who is Northside Knife? Well, Northside Knife is, um, I guess, the, the child of a man uh, named Eric. Uh, Eric is uh, located in northern Minnesota. Uh, he has been making knives for over six years now. He kind of sort of just makes what he wants to make. He's... Uh, I, I suppose the, the direction he goes is, is whatever he's feeling like. Uh, this is his first folding production knife, uh, but he's made a friction folder in the past, fixed blades, etc. Uh, Eric did mention that he has quite a bit more as far as designs are concerned, uh, that he, um, well, he, he basically just told me, uh, you know, wait and see what's going to happen. So um, that, that definitely makes me excited considering my experience with this knife, not to sort of give anything away. Uh, but yeah, Eric, um, as far as how I obtained this knife, I basically shot Eric a message on Instagram, said, hey, I'm a total random guy on the internet, uh, but I saw on YouTube and, uh, you know, various other video platforms that there aren't really any reviews of this knife out yet. Uh, no hands-on videos, no impressions, nothing like that. Would you be willing to send me a knife, again, a totally random guy on the internet, uh, just a knife to review so I can make a video for you? Uh, we went back and forth in a bit, and even though Eric has been burnt on this a few times now, uh, sending a knife out in exchange for a review or something, and then the other person not coming through on their end of the deal. He still was willing to send me a knife out with no deposit, no nothing, uh, just on good faith. So before I continue, Eric, thank you so much for the opportunity to, uh, well, to have this knife. I mean, he he straight up gave it to me, guys. So uh, please keep that in mind. But also, thank you, Eric. Again, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. And I cannot tell you how much of a joy it was to review this knife. Uh, now... As far as the actual review itself, first let's do some size comparisons. That's something that Nick is uh, pretty great at. First, we've got the Komodo right here, and uh, we're on just a bit of an angle, so I'll put the Komodo up top so it's more genuine. Um, first size comparison, I think a pretty apt one, is uh, against the uh, Chavez Ultramar. Um, this is the, I believe, the Redencion. Uh, this is a full tie, but let's go butt to butt here. You can see that the Komodo is, uh, is definitely a little longer, but in terms of effective blade length. Uh, the uh, the Chavez definitely wins out there. Uh, next, we'll just uh, get another knife out of the line up here. It's a bit of a random collection of knives as far as uh, size comparisons go, but I still think they, they do their job. Uh, we've got the uh, Masterop Ferrum Forge Wee Knives Buck. As you can see, this is actually, this is almost dead on the money as far as overall length is concerned. Um, the Komodo is definitely a bit taller, as you can see, but uh, the Buck definitely makes for a, a good size comparison lengthwise. Next, another one that's good lengthwise is the uh, Spider Co. Capara. I'm going to try not to cut myself this time. First time I tried to film this review, cut myself pretty early on, and it took like an hour to, for it to stop bleeding. If you ever wonder if the Capara was sharp or a slicer, yeah, it, uh, it definitely is. Uh, if we go about to about here, you can see the Kapara is actually a little, just a little longer, but again, not nearly as tall as the Komodo. Uh, next, the only knife in my collection that's bigger than the Komodo, uh, weight-wise at least, the Benchmade Adamas. Uh, it's actually a little longer than the Komodo. Handle-wise, it's also a little longer than the Komodo, and then weight-wise as well. Uh, next, moving on, then we'll try to knock through these, uh, or get through these fairly quickly. We've got a Real Steel Megalodon, longer than the Komodo there. Another uh, sort of overbuilt titanium frame lock, the Spyderco Techno. Definitely a little smaller than the Komodo, I can say that much. Um, moving on, we've got uh, Benchmade Crooked River, Mini Crooked River. And this is a good one as well because overall length, it's actually just a little bit longer than the Komodo. And then finally, a knife that actually makes the Komodo look tiny, uh, the Spyderco Dragonfly. Uh, as you can see, yeah, no, I, I was just kidding. This is actually um, way, way bigger to the point where the Komodo just it looks like a dragonfly in comparison. So... 
Anyway, uh, moving on, as far as the review system goes, uh, I like to use the P-E-N-I-S method. Um, P for pleasant, E for excellent, N for neutral, uh, I for imperfections, and then S for the suck. Um, not really sure what it stands for yet, it, it kind of just has a nice ring to it. Uh, especially the, uh, the neutral, I feel, is uh, a category a lot of reviewers miss. So yeah, the P-E-N-I-S method, it's, uh, it's all the rage, so you guys, you heard it here first. Uh, but anyway, moving on, uh, let's go ahead and get started with the review. Uh, first, as far as specs are concerned, so before we even uh, jump into the actual PENIS, um, just a quick, a bit quick, uh, a, <laughs> a bit of quick info on the Komodo. Um, the Komodo itself, overall length of seven and fifteen sixteenths inches, so eight inches basically. Um, a blade length of uh, just under three point five inches, from what I could see, basically three point five inches for all intents and purposes. Uh, cutting edge, as you can see, is uh, well. Fairly comparable to the Techno, maybe a smidge longer, so that's something we'll talk about later. Um, Weight-wise, 6.25 ounces on this guy. There is uh, no internal milling. It's, uh, it's a bit difficult to see, but yeah, there's no pocketing or anything like that. So this is uh, definitely a bit hefty. Uh, it does come in three different variants. This is the uh, stone wash handle with satin blade. Eric likes to call it raw titanium, or uh, sorry, raw metal. Uh, raw steel, actually. Third time's a charm, so I actually like the uh, the motif there. Uh, he also has a full stone wash and then a full PBD stone wash as well. Uh, so there are three different bearings, or three different variants. There are ceramic bearings in here. Uh, you also have lock bar insert, over travel stop, full titanium handles, S35 VN steel, and manufactured by Wee Knives. Something to keep in mind. Uh, and also we're using T8 hardware all around. It does have a free spinning pivot, but if you have two bits, then uh, you're good to go there. So, Speaking of Wee Knives, let's start off with the Pleasant. First, this is manufactured by Wee Knives. As uh, Wee Knives has made it fairly clear at this point with their multiple generations of knives, the various mass drop collaborations, and then the various knives they made for, uh, for smaller makers, their quality is um, it's second to none, maybe to Rayat at this point, but just because Rayat uh, puts, a, I guess, a, a, just a slighter, uh, more refined amount of uh, fit and finish, let's say, or, or design, um, I guess, detail. Um, yeah, it, quite frankly, Rayot and Wee Knives, the gap there is, uh, is smaller than it ever has been. But uh, yeah, manufactured by Wee, fit and finish is great. Uh, there aren't any you know, overly sharp edges. Everything looks to be finished very well. High quality materials, great hardware. Shows zero wear from my disassembly and cleaning that I did initially when I got this knife. So yeah, the, the finishing on this is great. Uh, next, ergos on this knife are actually pretty fantastic. So. I'm gonna to try to show off as many grips as I can here. Uh, this is just kind of a standard grip right here using the jimping right here and here uh, to sort of locate my thumb. Standard grip right there. Uh, you can also choke forward on the blade with your thumb. It kind of moves down this uh, a bit of a scoop on the top. You can choke up. This is all unsharpened right here. So you can choke up with your first finger right there. Um, reverse grip, not that you're gonna use it often, but is super, super comfortable on this knife. So thumb goes right here, super comfy. Um, this knife does accommodate a variety of grips. Ergonomically, it is great. The clip is not a hot spot at all. Um, you can feel it just a little bit in this grip. As soon as you choke forward, the clip basically disappears. So ergonomics on this knife, fantastic. Uh, next, another pleasant thing, the action on this knife is fantastic. Again, it is running on ceramic bearings, but the fact that this blade is a little heavier than most means that not only does it deploy very well, I'll show a few deployment methods here, but uh, as far as drop shottiness is concerned, yeah, it um, it drops shot with just a little bit of encouragement. As far as actual deployment goes, you can spidey flick it, you can pointer finger flick it, you can ring finger flick it, uh, you can, let's see if I can pull this up, pinky finger flick it, uh, you can thumb open it, you can thumb flick it, and this is actually kind of, um, I guess, a bit of a surprise, you can front flip this super, super easy. Yeah, it is actually a joy to front flip this knife. Um, I have yet to encounter an overbuilt front flipper of all things. And this one, oh my goodness, Eric has the action dialed in. Uh, it is a joy to front flip. And again, just a little bit of encouragement and this thing drops shut without a problem. Uh, so the action on this knife, it's borderline excellent. Um, but I wanted to save, you know, just a few things for the excellent. So I put it in the pleasant, but the action on this knife is is fantastic. It is typical Wii, but the fact that the blade's a little heavy, and then the fact that the detent on this is so perfectly dialed in. Also, just, just in case you made it this far, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> anyway, um, the fact that the detent is so perfectly dialed in for spidey flicking, uh, for thumb flicking, anything, and then it does not shake out 
Ugh, man, I had to really, really get some force going. This thing shakes out only if you put some serious, serious force into this. There, I mean, it, it's to the point where it's obnoxious how much I just had to shake this knife to open it. So that is not a problem at all. Um, in fact, this is probably, I want to say, one of the top two or three knives, that, that Spidey Flick that um, I've had difficulty shaking out. I mean, again, I had to put an obnoxious amount of effort to shake it out just now. So, yeah, again, action, fantastic. Uh, next, the... Um, this is kind of, I guess, a, a, a smaller thing, but I still put on the Pleasant because a lot of people appreciate this, myself included. Um, the blade is completely sterile. Uh, now, we'll come back to this later, but as you can see, there's no manufacturer mark. There's no maker's mark. There's no steel marking. There's no benchmade.com forward slash patent.html.jpg.gif. You know, mp 4org There's nothing like that. So uh, this is a completely sterile blade. Everywhere. I mean, there's there's not a single marking on it. A lot of people appreciate that. I know a lot of knives. <coughs> Benjamin, <coughs> did, I, did I say that out loud? Sorry. ZZ. Oh God. Oof. Oh man. Yeah. A lot of knives nowadays have um, blades that kind of serve as billboards as well. So this knife does that very well. And then speaking of the blade itself, I actually like this blade quite a bit. So um, again, we're using S35 VN steel. Uh, the blade design itself, and and we're gonna come back to that in the uh, in the excellent. But the blade itself, uh, the design is great. Uh, again, we'll come back to it, but as far as what this blade is kind of meant for, uh, and this this entire knife kind of lends itself to more of a hard use knife from what I can see, uh, given the combination of the weight, the jimping, which we will come back to, uh, the blade's stock thickness. This is fairly thick stock, uh, just to compare it to something that has thinner stock, so you can see. Uh, against the dragonfly, yeah, this, uh, you could probably fit almost two dragonflies in there, if not actually fit two dragonflies. Um, another comparison, everyone knows that the um, the Techno is uh, has got thick stock, and yeah, I'd say the Chamfers make it a little deceptive, but this is borderline just as thick of the, in fact, yeah, it's almost as thick as the Techno. Uh, so that's, that's uh, yeah, that, that, that should give me a good idea of how thick the stock is. However, um, you know, the grind is is decently tall here. Um, it's it's fairly shallow, but you can see the edge it terminates into. It's not going to be uh, the world's best slicer, as uh, someone likes to put it. But it's thin enough that I didn't really have too much of an issue using it. Uh, definitely lends itself to harder use. So this is going to be a sturdy edge. Uh, you can use it for, like I said, harder use. You know, you, cardboard breakdown is fine. Food prep is all right. It's going to be a little wedgy. But, uh, you know, if you're, you're hacking things apart, you know, lots of rope, etc., cetera, um, or, you know, zip ties, this, at least that's hard use for me as an IT guy. Um, hard use for this knife, uh, this blade, that's what it lends itself to. Next, and this is something that's going to be, uh, I guess, a little underappreciated, depending on whether or not you like to tinker with your knives a lot. But, um, guys, and this, this actually really blew my mind, this knife right now has the pivot tightened down at basically max tightness. Uh, had I tightened it down anymore, I'd be like really wrenching it to the point where I'd never be able to open it again. This is operating at max tightness all the way around. Max tightness, just like a Sebenza, in fact. Um, and that's the comparison I wanted to make. Uh, as far as takedown goes, we just have these three screws. That is it. So again, this is free spinning. Just something to keep in mind. Uh, so that's a bit of a negative, but the fact that it's just three screws, pops open, you've got your bearings, you got races, uh, stainless steel bearing races from what I can see, um, you know, clean them out, etc. Um, this thing goes back together like a breeze. This is one of the easiest knives to put back together I have ever encountered. And the fact that you can screw this down all the way and have it be, uh, I guess, performing at this level is is incredible. So that is that is really one of the best things about this knife, in my opinion, is just how easy it is to take down and reassemble. Again, borderline excellent. So just to recap, made by Wii Knives, Ergos are great. Action, fantastic. Again, borderline excellent there. In fact, uh, one of the best flicking actions I have ever encountered, including um, uh, the front flipping as well. Probably the most satisfying front flip, given how chunky the blade is. Um, sterile blade. The blade design itself is um, fairly well thought out. And then the construction and takedown capability of this knife is uh, is second to none. Next, in terms of the excellent, uh, as you can tell already, and it's a shame that I don't have a Spidey Chef for comparison, but this knife, um, yeah, yes, it, it's reminiscent of a Spidey Chef, but this knife, uh, it's it's bold. It's different. There is a reason why I contacted Eric for this knife, why I was so feverish to get myself... Uh, of one of these knives is because the design is um, it is a bold departure from what you're going to see uh, on the vast majority of the knife market. 
I can't think of another knife, again, other than the Spidey Chef, to a certain degree. This is basically the Spidey Chef's bigger, more badass older brother, <laughs> for lack of a better uh, way to put it. Um, the, the design of this knife is... Um, is a serious departure, again, from, from the norm. It's not just your standard titanium frame lock uh, with your point blade, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this not only does it, um, you know, sort of uh, break away from the norm, but it does it well. It retains uh, functionality. It adds functionality as a result as well. So that is that is the best kind of design where um, you can also, you have innovative form along with uh, excellent functionality, additions to functionality that a normal tie frame lock wouldn't have. So that. That is excellent. I applaud Eric as this is his first folding knife design. Um, the fact that he came up with something like this is is pretty spectacular, and it makes me excited for what he's going to be uh, sort of bringing out in the future with Wee Knives, which I really hope I really hope uh, is going to be a thing. So um, next, and this is uh, this is kind of uh, I guess not initially something that might strike some of you as excellent. This is the best clip Wee Knives has ever put out. Period. I've tried plenty of Wee Knives at this point. Um, I haven't heard anything about any other excellent clips. This is the best clip Wee Knives has ever put out, and as a result, carrying this knife, even though it's over six ounces, is a dream. This clip has plenty of spring. Sure, there's a tiny bit of a point there, but again, not a hot spot at all. Slides into the pocket, and uh, as Nick does like to show, look, there's nothing to catch on here. Nothing at all. This thing carries like an absolute dream. I love carrying it. Um, it's right up there with Benchmade Deep Carry Clips, for example. Uh, basically one of the best clips I have ever used on a folding pocket knife. Uh, so that's, yeah, I, I cannot tell you how happy I am about it. There have been knives I've had that um, the clip sort of made or broke them for me. Um, knives I, I couldn't carry, like the, the, the first Skaha, for example. That clip, terrible. Uh, Real Steel Megalodon, clip placement, not the greatest. Um, and the clip itself, not the best. So there's there are some knives out there where the clip sort of um, really detracted from the, the experience of using the knife, but carrying this knife is just, it's stellar. So... Um, that is the excellent first. Just the, the design of this knife is really well done. Again, Eric, fantastic job. Uh, thank you for not just putting out another uh, you know drop point tie frame lock. And then carrying this knife is a dream, plain and simple. Uh, next, uh, going on to the neutral. Uh, one thing you do have to come to terms with with this knife is that the, the size and the weight are going to put it out of the pockets of... Um, you know, a, a, just an automatic uh, percentage of, of knife carrying, knife using people. Uh, this is over six ounces, again. Uh, and this is, um, you know, it's a bigger blade too. So the actual blade itself comes in about three and a half inches. So if you're, your local municipality doesn't uh, doesn't like that, you're out of luck. And then if you're an office drone, if you're wearing slacks, if you're wearing shorts, this is not going to be a knife you want to carry. Um, it can turn into a bit of a brick there. So um, just the size and the weight. Again, neutral, just because you know that going into it. You know it's a certain size of knife. You wouldn't be carrying an Adamus in your shorts, for example, and you wouldn't be carrying something like this either. So just something to keep in mind. Next, I mentioned earlier how the sterile blade is, um, is a pleasant thing. However, the fact that there's no steel marking can rub some people the wrong way. Uh, the specs are readily available on uh, Eric's website, so I'm not going to say it's a bad thing. It's it's a snap to figure out what the specs of this knife are. There aren't multiple variants at this point as far as steel is concerned. But um, there is no steel marking, so just, just something to keep in mind. Again, that's that's neutral to, to me at least. Um, next, this is something that's a, a real nitpick, um, and that's why I kept it neutral, because as it stands, uh, the way that this currently is, it's not a problem. Um, maybe another chamfer right here on the opening hole would have been nice. Uh, just because the blade does have chamfers running along the spine, as it stands, as it stands, it's not sharp. This is not Tai Chung opening hole sharp. You're not going to cut yourself and start bleeding. Uh, it is perfectly fine right now. In fact, some people might appreciate uh, the fact that this isn't um, really widely chamfered, like the spine of the blade, for example. So the, the wide chamfer running here, or the wider chamfers running along the actual scales. Um, the, the, it still allows it to catch just a tiny bit, which I think is, is a good thing. Um, so honestly, that's that's kind of a, a nitpick. It's and that's why I put it under the neutral. Um, next, so so just to recap the neutral again: size and the weight, uh, no steel marking, and um, and just the the chamfering there, which really is a non-issue. Even as I talk about it, it's like really grasping for a neutral straw there. So um, really, just the the steel marking and then the the size and the weight of this knife. Um, now moving on to the imperfections first, and this is something I mentioned pretty early on: uh, the jimping on this knife. It lends itself to hard use, uh, like I mentioned earlier, mainly because it's much more comfortable with gloves on. Um, this is some overbuilt jimping akin to, or oversized rather, akin to, let's go with the, the Ultramar. You can see it's got the same style of jimping. In fact, it's it's 
basically the same from what I can see. It's really, really close. And um, the, this this kind of jimping can wear on your thumb over time. Um, I've actually developed a, a bit of a callus. It's kind of hard to see. So this has become more comfortable. That is how much I've actually liked playing with this knife. Um, but the jimping is, um, it can be a little on the rougher side. Uh, it, it definitely wears on you over time, especially here. One thing you can see, and it's pretty clear to see, there is no cutout for lock bar access. In other words, in order to disengage the lock bar, you have to use friction caused by the jimping itself to disengage the lock bar. Um, that is what chewed up my finger the most at first. Uh, let's see if I can even get it in the shot. Right there, that's where I've been touching the lock bar a lot. So, you know, disengage it. You get a bit of a callus. It's, it's something that's going to happen if you like to fidget a lot and you want this knife. Um, but I do wish there was a bit of a lock bar cut out there. As it stands, you know, I... I like this knife so much, and, and it was not to the point where it made it unusable, um, but uh, that's that's something to keep in mind. It's the same sort of jimping here as well, and uh, up on the blade too. So, yeah, jimping, I wish it was maybe a little finer or uh, just a little less harsh. Um, but if you're using gloves, I did test it with gloves. It's perfect for gloves. It, it grabs fairly well. So that, that lends it to the hardiest profile, but there's something to keep in mind there. Um, next, this is definitely an imperfection. Uh, so it's not, not a super bad thing. It's, it's definitely on the imperfection side of things, the, the nitpick. Um, the grind on this knife, the primary bevel, doesn't line up perfectly with the opening hole right there. So you can see, um, is this an issue? No. Uh, but the price of this knife and this... This is kind of a neutral thing. I, in fact, I should have mentioned earlier, I believe it's $270. Definitely on, um, well, it's the upper range of $200, obviously. It falls in line, more or less, with um, Wii's other collabs. You're getting a lot of knife for the money, so I don't have a huge problem with it or anything like that. Um, but uh, I guess at, at this level, you expect these sorts of things to, to be sorted out. Um, just because you, if you're paying almost $300 for a pocket knife, these, these are things that you look for just, just to make sure that you know they're giving a damn. So I don't expect this to be a thing on all of them, but just something to keep in mind. Speaking of the grind itself and, and sort of the blade, this is definitely an imperfection as well. Uh, right here, this right here, um, it almost feels as harsh as the jimping. In fact, it feels just as harsh. Um, this portion, this cutout, I wish it was chamfered more. Uh, period. I wish it was chamfered. Um, let's see here. Mainly, I wish these these corners were broken. Uh, now, the reason it becomes an issue, if you're doing standard grip like this, totally fine. But if you're pushing your thumb down the blade to give, give the, the tip more, uh, I guess, uh, pressure, my finger has a tendency to want to push up right here, and this gets sharp. This, this starts to hurt. Uh, at that point, I want to put my finger right here on the, uh, I guess, the faux forward finger trail. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but the, uh, yeah, the, this, this, that, I either wish it wasn't there entirely or if just was broken down. I do like that it lends to the design a bit. Uh, just, just with the, um, the opening hole here, I do believe this cutout does lend itself to, I guess, more of a daring design or just a little something extra, but I wish that that wasn't a thing right there, those corners. Um, continuing on as far as the blade is concerned, um, uh, just a moment. Oh gosh, I'm getting too old for this. Um, you'd be surprised what kind of position I have to hold to uh, to do this review. I don't have a professional setup, but um, as far as the uh, the blade itself, and one thing I wanted to mention regarding the choil specifically, uh, the the blade itself can use a bit of refinement, I suppose. Uh, this this blade, especially the blade to uh, handle ratio, sharpened length, specifically to handle ratio. So you can see the sharpened length of this knife, and that was something that was made apparent pretty early on. Um, it's it's not a heck of a lot. Again, this is uh, comparing to a dragonfly. We'll line them right up. You just got a little bit more than a dragonfly there. We'll compare it to a techno again. Right here. Yeah, compared to a techno. Uh, this the blade is, is just a little bit longer than a techno, considering how big this knife is, and um, I guess how heavy it is too. The fact that the sharpened length is so small is eh, it it's i don't i don't want to say it sucks because it's still perfectly usable i didn't find myself lacking for length of blade or a specifically uh sharpened blade length but the thing is and this is this is where we i wish there there was a bit of refinement i wish that the plunge grind was moved here right at the base of the sharpened edge so the finger choil right here stayed at full thickness throughout so that's something Spartaco does really well, except with the amalgam, which is, this is a totally separate thing, but I wish the amalgam had a full stock thickness on the choil. That's not why I kept it. All right, that's one reason why I didn't keep it. This can get a little, uh, a little cutty after a while. If you're really bearing down on it, yeah, this can, this can start to wear into your finger a bit. Um, so I do wish that the plunge ground is moved right up here. 
um, and that this was kept at full thickness. Not sure how it would look. I think it honestly looked perfectly fine. Um, as it stands, this is perfectly usable, uh, so it's it's not a suck thing. And um, and if you have gloves, again, it's it's less of an issue, but something to keep in mind there. And then um, really, is that sort of carries on into uh, another thing, which is sort of design refinement in a sense. Really, the plunge grind being a thing. Um, I do wish that maybe this was more rounded, but that's more for the visual aesthetic more than anything else. So really, as far as refinement is concerned, the the plunge grind moving forward, maybe a bit of scalloping there. Um, that's that's something we talk about a bit later, but yeah, just just a few small issues with the blade there. Um, now, as far as the suck goes, <sighs> this is the worst part. Um, Eric, I'm sorry, but there is uh, there is no suck. I can't offer much much more criticism for you. Uh, quite frankly, again, as a first folding knife design, it's incredible that there is um, there is no suck here, um, which is surprising considering the name of my reviewing method. So, uh, yeah, that's there is no suck at all. Um, this knife is it's. It's surprising how, uh, I guess, how little there is as far as glaring issues or anything. So that just pushes us into the final conclusion. And uh, that conclusion, just to, to borrow a term from Nick, um, this is a rough gem, in my opinion. As it stands, this knife is, I think, still worth the money, given how much knife you're getting, given the innovation of design, given the uh, the incredible usability of this knife uh, in certain regards, given the how fidgetable it is, how phenomenal the action is. Being able to break it down easily and put it back together was a snap, how well it carries. Honestly, this would totally be a gem, except for just a few things I'd like to refine. So just getting that lock bar cut out there, maybe take, you know, taking care of these corners right here, getting this choil at full thickness, um, and then maybe working on this, you know, it kind of breaks the lines up just a little bit. So maybe keeping this fully rounded uh, just to sort of capitalize on the design, which is just excellent. The fact that the blade carries on so well into the handle both ways, um, just the design of this knife overall um is is great so just it, again it's a rough gem something I, I should have mentioned earlier by the way total total small thing where's the jimping extended all the way up as it stands though i have well of course i slipped there i have 99 percent of the time no issue opening it so that's that's not why or that's one reason why i didn't mention it anyway rough gem i cannot wait to see what else eric puts out as it stands this knife i still think is totally worth the money i again i'm so thankful that eric uh, bumped this my way because this knife is just it's a it's it is uh i guess a force to be reckoned with in a sense this is it breaks away from the norm it's it, it, a shining example i think of what eric is capable of i cannot wait to see what else he puts out and uh, is it worth the money yes can it be improved on yeah a little bit so if there was a v2 i would totally snap that up in a heartbeat but as it stands North, north side knife Komodo, rough gem. Uh, it, I'm super happy uh, with this knife, and it's it's definitely going to be staying for uh, a long time, if not forever. Uh, as far as Eric is concerned and, and obtaining this knife, you can find Eric at the uh, uh, on Instagram, rather, at uh, north side knife, all one word. Uh, he does have a link to, uh, to purchase this knife in his bio. Uh, so I would go, you know, give him a follow, see what else he's up to. Uh, go ahead and check this knife out. And, um, and yeah, thanks for joining me, guys. I'm, I'm pretty sure <clears throat> Nick is trying to take back over, so I'm going to cut this off now. Uh, have a wonderful day, guys, and uh, thanks for joining me. See you later.